Coach Prime and the Colorado Buffs are looking to keep their expectation-shattering season rolling, traveling into Oregon this weekend. Oregon headlined by quarterback Bo Nix and their staple of running backs, Winnington and Bucky Irving. Also head coach Dan Lanning, former defensive coordinator. And, Drew, I always say that teams take after the personality of their head coach. And with that run game and how this defense plays, this Oregon team is a physical bunch. Yeah, Oregon's a very physical team. I mean, you mentioned it. Bucky Irving, uh, Noah Winnington, Jordan James. These are running backs that run fast. They run downhill. All of them are averaging over seven yards per carry. And Colorado, when you look at this on paper, could not be playing a worse team um, in terms of Colorado's defense. This is a team that's currently ranked 119th in total rushing defense. And you were going up against an Oregon team that has an NFL offensive line, NFL running backs. And, don't, and then let's not forget Bo Nix, what he can do with his legs. And he's a much improved player than what he was uh, his first couple of years in college football. Totally transformed ever since he's entered the Pac-12. And he's a weapon. And he's a weapon. I think he's going to play a, a big role um, if Oregon's going to get the win here and cover the spread. Of course, this uh, this is an Oregon team that has been tested already. They play Texas Tech. Now, say what you want about Texas Tech, but they do run a kind of an air raid offense, which can be very difficult to defend. And I think Oregon, for the most part, did a good job of creating some turnovers. I believe they had three interceptions in that game. And it's going to take some interceptions, I think, if Oregon uh, wants to run away with this one. If they can't force turnovers, then you let Shadir Sanders do what he wants to do. Um, Oregon can be looking at a, a tough game here. Uh, even regardless of them being at home, I know the spread's 21 points. Uh, Oregon's going to have to create some turnovers. They're, they've been tested against a pass-heavy team already, and uh, Colorado's going to be no different. Yeah, defensively, I love what Oregon does. They mix it up. They run a lot of man and zone, and they are aggressive. They love to blitz. They will blitz on first, second, and third down. And I think that one of the big question marks for this Colorado team is that offensive line. Will they be able to keep Shadur protected against the top echelon of defenses in the country? And that's going to be a big battle this weekend. It is going to be between the Colorado offensive line and the Oregon pass rush. Because this, like I said earlier, this is an aggressive group. They are a fast sideline to sideline defense, and they will clog up holes in the run game. Yeah, and this is a Colorado offensive line that's really struggled with protecting a Shadur in the pocket. Uh, 15 sacks already for the season, and you're going into a hostile Oregon environment, which the crowd's going to be loud. You could expect some false starts. And once an offensive line gets some false starts, offensive line starts second-guessing themselves. They're going a little they're a little bit slower off their quick first step. And I really feel like that's when Oregon can really start eating up and putting some pressure on Shadur. And if that's the case, I think Colorado's going to have a tough time moving the ball. You could expect Shadur to maybe make some mistakes getting pressured like that. So Oregon, there's no secret what they're going to do in this game. They're going to bring a lot of pressure. They're going to force Colorado to be in some long third and long situations where it's obvious passing situations. And at Colorado, I just don't really have much confidence in them running the ball. Dylan Edwards is okay, I guess. Uh, 25 carries, 136 yards. He's averaging about five yards a carry, but it's going to take a lot more uh, than that if you want to get the ball moving on this Oregon defense. Uh, Shadur can't do it all. I think, unfortunately, for Colorado, a lot of their weaknesses that have been talked about in the preseason – uh, both offensive line, running the football, stopping. I think all that's going to show on Saturday. And unfortunately, I think the, the task isn't going to get much easier for Colorado down the road, and I think it starts here. On the side of Colorado, Drew, let's not forget, offensively, they do have weapons. Of course, they're going to be without Travis Hunter for the next couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a big blow. I think it's going to be a bigger blow on defense because not having your lockdown corner against an Oregon team who will throw the ball deep, could be a problem. That number 10 that came in to replace Travis Hunter at a corner did not do a great job. Colorado State's number one receiver ended up going for over 130 yards on 16 receptions. So that's going to be a big, big red flag. But offensively, Colorado has weapons, and it's almost seemed like a new guy has stepped up every single week. Last week it was their tight end, former walk-on, J.C. Horn. Also, not J.C. Horn. Um, what's his name? Jimmy, Drew? Jimmy Horn. Jimmy Horn. Okay, thank you. He stepped up and had a couple of big games. So Colorado has the weapons offensively. And Shadur Sanders, in my opinion, is beautiful with staying in the pocket when he knows he's going to get hit, dealing with the pressure of the defense that's coming in on when the pocket's collapsing. He will stand in there and stand tall in the pocket to make a throw. Bo Nix, on the other hand, will not do that. Bo Nix, whenever he gets pressure, whenever he got pressured against, the te against Texas Tech, he was one-hopping balls in the dirt, uh, and it eventually got to the point where the blitz would get picked up, but as soon as he recognized the blitz was coming, his internal clock sped up, and he was just acting like he was getting pressured when a lot of the times that Oregon O-line was covering it up front. So that's a red flag for me. I think that this game is going to be a battle of who is the best quarterback, okay? And 
in my opinion, I think Shadur Sanders is not even close a better quarterback than Bo Nitt. It's not even close. Now, is that going to be enough to win the game? I'm not so sure because of the weaknesses that Colorado has defensively up the middle and with their offensive line. But at the end of the day, this is not going to be a 21-point game. Oregon is not going to cover this game, and that is a fact. Yeah, and I agree with you, Aiden. I went back and forth uh, looking at this, and when you look at this game on paper and you look at the weaknesses that we talked about about Colorado this season, and then you just talk, you look at what they've done compared to what people expected of them. Colorado has exceeded almost every single expectation you can think of. So why not? Why couldn't Coach Prime do it again? Why couldn't he uh, exceed expectations again and be competitive in this ball game? They've proven to me multiple times already that Colorado can be they can handle adverse situations. They can play against uh, big name teams where people thought they had no chance and come out with a win. Now, getting into my prediction, I just I'm going to be straight up. I don't think Colorado wins this game, and I do think Oregon wins this game by double digit points. But I will say this: this could be a very very tight game heading into the fourth quarter. I just think, unfortunately for Colorado, the depth is just going to show. I think Oregon's really going to start running the ball late in the game, and they're going to start picking up six, seven, eight yards of carry, really running out the clock. And I think Colorado is going to get stuck in some situations where they're going to have to pass the ball late. And I think that's when the sacks are going to come in. And uh, and if Shador is not handling the pressure very well, he could turn the ball over a couple times. I expect a very close game, though, in the first half. Unfortunately, Oregon's going to get the win. But they're not going to cover. I don't think Oregon gets to 21. If the Oregon offensive coordinator calls the game like he should, like you mentioned, and runs the ball and controls the clock and keeps Shador and that Colorado offense off the field – similar to what Colorado State did in that first half, I could see Oregon sitting on a lead throughout the whole entire game. But I would be ignorant to look at what Shador's been doing and what he's been doing with these with these weapons that he has. And you mentioned Dylan Edwards. He's not necessarily, you know, as much as a between-the-tackles runner as he is a passing threat from the backfield. And also, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, that walk-on tight end that they have is a dog. If you have a dominant tight end that Shador can dump it to other than his running backs whenever he's in trouble – that could be that could be a big chess piece for this Colorado team, and also I've mentioned this uh, Colorado offensive coordinator before. I can't think of his name, but he was the offensive coordinator at Kent State last year, the same Kent State team that played the national champion Georgia Bulldogs at Georgia and coached a prolific game and really really showcased his skills, and that's why he ended up getting this Colorado job. So this this coaching staff that Dion has assembled is full of dogs, just like the guys he's going out in the portal and recruiting. So my prediction for this game, I do think that Oregon is going to win. I would be surprised if it was anything more than 10 points. But that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. If you like the video and you're still watching, leave a comment and a like. It really helps us out. Let us know what you think. Also, if you have any video ideas or anything you want to see from us, leave that in the comments as well and let us know. Um, we'll, we appreciate it. See you. See you guys.